Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at my terminal setup. Now I'm someone that basically lives in the terminal, whether it be writing code or even listening to music, I basically do everything inside of this environment. And the main reason is because I can customize everything to the absolute extreme, which allows me to have a very personal experience when I'm using my computer. And so today I thought I would go over some of those aesthetic changes and some of the actual useful ones um, and sort of compile it into this one video here so you can hopefully take away some new things to add to your own setup. Everything that I mentioned in this video is going to be linked in the description, by the way, so if you want a quick summary of everything I go through, then it's going to be right there. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So first things first, the terminal that I use is the Kitty Terminal Emulator. Now, I used Westerm up until then uh, for a while, and I actually really, really liked Westerm, and I really liked that you could customize Westerm with Lua. However, I switched over to Kitty for one reason and one reason only, and that was their added cursor trail animations. Now, if you don't know what cursor trail animations are they're actually a pretty controversial feature so if i just open up neovim here and go to a file let's just like actually travel through let's actually move our cursor around here so if i press w to move by the word you'll see that instead of just instantly snapping to a character i'm actually sort of interpolating between these different uh, points here and what this does is if you look at like a bigger jump like this you'll see that it actually gives this pretty cool smearing effect that sort of draws like a line between where it began and where it ended. I really, really like this for two reasons. One, it looks pretty freaking cool in my opinion. And two, it's also really, really good whenever I am jumping through code really, really quickly and I make some very big jump. It actually helps me, it actually helps my eyes to track these sort of jumps and sort of keep track of where I am in a file better. To show it a little bit better, I would actually make a bigger jump. Like let's say I wanted to jump to the uh, next occurrence of a curly bracket. I could then just press like F curly bracket and I jump over here. As you can see, it kind of gives you like a leading line to follow. And so that's really the only reason that I use Kitty over Westerm, to be honest with you. And as soon as Ghosty adds the cursor trail, I will probably be, be switching over there. Now, just to give you a quick comparison of like what it looks like without that, I have Ghosty open here. And if we go to some file here and I, and I go to the curly bracket, as you can see, it kind of just snaps immediately there, which actually does mean that it is, you know, technically a little bit snappier. Um, but honestly, I prefer the added, you know, um, accessibility of being able to see where your cursor is going. So that's why I prefer the cursor trail. Anyways, tangent aside, that is why I use the kitty terminal. Now let's go ahead and get into some stuff that I use within the terminal. So an absolute essential for me is Tmux. And Tmux is basically this terminal multiplexer, which allows you to manage sessions with a client server model and you have all these panes and windows and it allows you to just have a really really good experience so if i actually attach to an existing session you'll see that i have one here i usually title my generic one zero because i'm lazy but this is kind of like what a window will look like for me i have my main window here and i have some side panel here um, and this is for you know basically being able to rapidly jump from the editor window which is this one here and the terminal window which is the one i use for running my commands so a general workflow for me would look something like this like I would open up NeoVim on this one. I would go to some file. I would make some edit or something. And then I would go here and then I would actually run a command and run the program. Um, this is, you know, pretty nice. And also if, you know, I want better output, I would actually focus the terminal like this. So leader Z would toggle between like a full screen and the partial part that you have it set to here, which is really good for long commands because I can actually like run it and see the entirety of the output. So, uh, but anyways, this is generally my workflow and I use NeoVim. So if you don't know, if you haven't seen any of my videos, I use NeoVim for all of my text editing. I do find that it is the superior setup for editing text, um, at least in the way that I do it. Um, and so when I'm usually editing a NeoVim, I usually do it one file at a time. Although sometimes I will split the pane once, but never more than once. And if I do that, I will focus this window and then I will just enter VSP here and then use um, telescope to go to somewhere else. Uh, but it never gets more complex than that for me. I do just stick to my generic NeoVim workflow with some good muscle memory of some of these key bindings here. If you want a more in-depth explanation of my NeoVim configuration in specific, that video has already been made and it's linked in the description. It is slightly outdated, uh, but you know, it's not very, it's not very different. I have found a pretty comfortable workflow that I have cemented over this time. So I'm just going to focus this pane here and let's go ahead and explore some of the things that I use here. So the first thing is that whenever I actually navigate places, I don't just do like CD dot dot 
and then like CD back to go back to where I was. I don't do those kind of things because it isn't very quick. I generally have replaced most of my workflow with using Zeoxide. And if you don't know what Zeoxide is, it's basically like a supercharged change directory where it actually learns where you wanna go whenever you CD into new directories. So now I'm inside of my home directory and let's say I wanna go back to my so-called testing project here. Uh, what I would do is I would just press Z and then just type in like so-call and it will figure it out because I only have a couple of projects with the word so call in it and it's probably going to pick the one that i visit the most which happens to be the one that i was working on now if this wasn't a name that wasn't specific like so called, like maybe it was just a name with test in it and that's all i remembered then i would need a little bit of a, a better way to actually like scrub through different possibilities so for that i would press zi and zi essentially gives me this cool interface for typing in things and then i could type in so call and you can see that there's just a few of these here but i could also type in things like raylib which i do have quite a few for and then I could go to a specific Raylib project and then I'm right there and then I could just press Z minus to go back to where I was. So that's really, really cool. And it's really easy to set up too, which is really awesome. And it, it's basically just a drop in replacement for a CD in most situations. Uh, but sometimes you need more extreme control. Um, so let's say like you are setting up a new project and you need to create like five directories. And you need to move these files into this other spot. You need to change all of their names. You need to like organize some things. Then I wouldn't want to be doing like, you know, make dir and then listing out the names and like using um, MV and C all over the place because it can be a little bit confusing and it can be a little bit cumbersome to do this one operation at a time and I am not a bash wizard I am a very normal bash user that knows most of the core utils that I need to know and nothing more so to make up for my inability to write bash in my head extremely quickly I can actually just use Yazi, which is essentially just a 2e replacement of your operating systems file explorer so instead of having to like open up finder and just go over there and, and edit some files in finder um, I I can actually use a much nicer interface here. I can just go back and forth like this. Um, I can actually preview assets. So let's say like I actually wanted to preview an image here. As you can see, I can actually see the image inside of my editor and that's thanks to the Kitty image protocol, which is another reason why I like Kitty, but it actually goes a little bit beyond that. Let's actually go to like one of my old homeworks here and let's go to the PDF. And as you can see, you know, theory of computation homework, um, it actually gives me a preview of my PDF in my terminal. I can also inspect zip files too, which is really, really cool. So it gives me basically an extremely super powerful experience, but I basically just use like my terminal whenever I want to quickly view an image. So I don't really have to use an image previewer anymore. Future me here, I totally forgot to mention that I use LazyGit. LazyGit is extremely useful whenever you are, you know, managing some really difficult merge conflict or anything like that. So I do open this whenever I'm doing anything that's non-trivial with Git, and it's really, really nice. It gives you, you know, nice user interfaces. It gives you all the different commands that you need, and it gives you a really simple interface for rebasing and everything that you need to do when using Git. So I do highly recommend using this. So the way that I've designed sort of the environment of my terminal is I like two things. I like consistency and I like minimal appearances. And so what I mean by those two things is this. For consistency, the you know file manager that I use outside of my text editor should be the same file manager that I use within my text editor, which is where I use yazi.envim here, which allows me to actually just straight up use Yazi inside of NeoVim. I originally used oil and I thought it was really cool because I can like edit my files like it is a text buffer um, in NeoVim. But honestly, like having to, you know, wrestle between two different ways of navigating files, it, it didn't really work super well for me. I kind of just prefer using Yazi. I think it is the superior way to work with files because whenever I am opening up a full on file manager, when I am writing code, it's generally because I want to do something, you know, actually extensive. Otherwise I would just telescope for something or I would just do colon E to actually start writing a file. Now I also mentioned minimal appearances. And what I mean is that I don't really like a lot of colors and I don't really like a lot of like very, very fancy like status things on here and all that sort of stuff. The, the closest thing to the, that I get to like a flashy status thing is my, you know, telling me what branch I'm on if I'm in a Git repository, which I actually use. So I think that's, you know, well warranted. I like to keep things very simple, which is why I use a base 16 theme, 
base 16 black metal gorgoroth and i generally keep it that way across everything so everything that i use uses this theme that way everything seems very homogenous it doesn't seem like i am jumping from one program to another it almost feels like this is some extremely extremely compact pre-made program with all these different features. So when I open up Yazi, you don't see like, oh wow, all of the colors just changed and I'm in this different environment. It is using these same colors as my terminal is, as my NeoVim is, as is everything else. And as far as the minimalism goes, if I open up NeoFetch here, um, you'll see that my theme is very, very simple. It only has like a few tones and then mostly just grayscale. And that's how I like it. A few tones to be able to tell, you know, have some highlights here and there, uh, but not too much to where it's like overwhelming my brain. So on the topic of colors, let's actually pin down what I am using for all of my little aesthetic things. So if we go to my kitty configuration here, um, there's only two relevant things in here and that is my font and my color scheme. Uh, the font that I use is Eosevka Term, which I find really, really nice because it's very compact, which means that I am able to fit a lot of characters on the screen. And I also just think it looks cool. So I like it, it looks cool. I think that's nice. Um, I, you, you can also see that I set the cell width to 95% because I do find that it wastes a little bit of space with all the, those little gaps there. I think it looks better with a smaller cell width anyways, so I keep it like that. Um, I do like the legacy font rendering inside of Kitty, and that's because I don't know what it is, but the the actual like upgraded font rendering here, it's like really, really bold, and I don't like it. It looks bad in my opinion. I, that was one of the things that I really didn't like about Kitty was the font rendering, so I'm really glad that I was able to find that upgraded font rendering. Now for the theme, I mentioned earlier that I'm using the Black Metal Gorgoroth theme, which is, you know, linked in the description. I find it really, really nice. It's a good middle ground between things. There are occasions where it can be a little too dark. Let's say I'm like in a dark area and my brightness is low, then I actually want to use something with a, with a bit more punchy colors. Then I would actually switch over to Vague, which this is Vague.envim here, which is um, a pretty nice looking theme in my opinion, but you know, as you can see, this sort of breaks my philosophy of everything being consistent and like homogenous. So I generally don't do this too often, but it is a fun theme and I do enjoy using it every now and then. Now, transparency. I do use some transparency, but I don't use it on backgrounds like the one I'm cur I currently have here. I currently have this like mountainous scene in the background. It's sort of like a peaceful um, sort of wallpaper here. And if I open up some code, it's not readable. This is way, way too bright. But if I put on like another background here, like I like this this background here um, by Nicholas Samori, I believe. Um, this one's pretty cool, and it's also very dark, which means that I can actually edit code and have a cool little you know image in the backgrounds while I'm editing code. You know, now, whenever I do want to lock in, sometimes I do find that a little bit of transparency can kind of get in the way, and it's more of just sort of like an aesthetic thing that I like to have there. Um, so I do like to actually put on the full um, actual black background here, and then just, you know, I put on a little nice peaceful theme so I don't go absolutely insane. So let's actually get into the nitty gritty and talk about my Tmux configuration because Tmux is absolutely the central part of this whole setup, so it's pretty important to know what I'm using there. Um, so the first thing is prefix to control S. This is because my control key is on the right side of my keyboard. I use a split keyboard. So I like to just be able to quickly roll it with two fingers. Um, and that just means that I can use things a little bit better than control B. I, it's just a preference, whatever. And then these are pretty important. These actually like allow the colors to look correct. I don't know, I, I'm not a terminal color expert here, but whenever you first run, run Kitty, there's a good chance that all of your colors will look messed up. And that's because these are not the default. So I had to do a little bit of digging to figure out what the what the ideal settings are for Mac OS to get my colors looking correct. Um, as you can see here, I have the evil mode set up and this is to actually enable Mac I called it evil because I'm a NeoVim user and it's generally anti-NeoVim to use the mouse in any capacity. But honestly, the mouse is actually extremely useful. If I open up like brew help here or something, it, you know, normally I would have to actually do um, leader opening bracket to be able to go up in here and highlight things and copy. And whenever I want to scroll like this, um, it actually doesn't work right off the bat with Tmux, so enabling the mouse fixes that, which is actually pretty needed sometimes. Uh, there's some other things too, so this is just some like specific things that don't really matter too much. This does matter. This is um, first setting Vim, Vim keys here, so I can um, actually like highlight text with Vim mode, so I can do this, and I can use like 
W and B to sort of go through files here and like copy things as I need. And these are actually binding, moving back and forth between panes to just control and then HJKRL. So I can actually do this with my panes. Now this doesn't work very well unless you also integrate it inside of NeoVim or whatever text editor you're using so that you're able to actually seamlessly navigate between panes, between NeoVim and Tmux panes. So let's say that I'm in a project here and I make a Tmux split here and I want to jump between these. This is totally fine, but let's say that I also want to split this window. Um, now what I'd have to do is I'd have to know which one of these is a NeoVim pane and which one of these is a Tmux pane. Um, this can be a bit of a pain, you know, pun intended there. Um, so there's actually a plugin called, I think it's called like Vim Tmux Navigator, and it basically allows me to use control HJKRL for NeoVim panes and for Tmux panes. So I can just do this and I'm using just control HJKRL. I'm not doing anything else. It basically, you know, again, reinforces that idea that this is sort of like this one cohesive program that's sort of extremely consistent in everything that it does. And yeah, I really don't use too much with Tmux. I keep it very, very minimal. I only have four plugins here and I honestly don't use these two. So I don't even know. It's, it, I keep it very, very vanilla with my Tmux setup. I have changed some colors and I think my colors look pretty okay. So that's, that's okay. It's just regular gray. Now there is this cool line here, which this is, yes, this is one line. It's a very long line. And basically I ripped this straight from some Stack Overflow post that it basically gives me this fuzzy finding window over my different uh, sessions. So, you know, I'm, I was doing some astronomy research and this is my college one for my college papers and stuff like that. So I can basically just like jump between those and go back and forth and just do that pretty quickly. So I like to do that kind of stuff. Now let's go ahead and get into these like little like added cool things that I like to put in my terminal that aren't exactly like necessary to my workflow, but they're pretty cool things that I like to use. Uh, C matrix here, which shows, you know, it's the classic um, it's the classic matrix sort of thing here. There's also the entirety of Star Wars inside of the terminal. So I can actually like, you know, fast forward a little bit here and we can actually get into it. So as you can see, we're actually watching Star Wars in the terminal. And yes, it is an actual recreation of Star Wars. It's not quite, you know, frame by frame, but I also like doing an infinite bonsai. This is another thing where it's like, if I'm just sitting there and I'm like writing something and I'm and my terminal's idling, this could be a fun little thing to look at. It'll just loop and make different bonsai randomly with this procedural generation um, technique here. And I think it looks pretty, pretty cool. Let's say that I'm like in the middle of a coding session and my thoughts are becoming too loud out of my head and I'm starting to think too introspectively and I need something to distract myself, uh, then I would actually open up a new tab and I can actually open up Spotify player, uh, which gives me a way to actually play Spotify inside of my terminal. And then I would probably play some tool because I like good music. And then I would just like play some tool. And I can't play it now because, you know, copyright, but like, there you go. I can just open up Spotify. Now, is this practical? Yeah, kind of. It's like, I would, I don't actually, I'm not an absolute insane person. Um, obviously the UI like on my phone for, for playing Spotify is much better. And whenever I'm using my phone, I'm of course using the Spotify on my phone. Uh, but the great thing about this is it actually syncs with my phone. So I can actually like, you know, be queuing things up on my phone here. And I can also just like quickly be like, okay, wait, maybe I want to skip that song. And then I can just go over to this tab and change something real quick. So there's another little gimmicky thing that I like to have inside of my terminal. So yeah, that basically covers my terminal setup. It was pretty sporadic, but it was just kind of like everything that I could think of to talk about my terminal. Um, it's not a groundbreaking setup. You know, I'm sure that if you clicked on this video, you've probably heard of NeoVim and Tmux and Kitty and all these sort of things that I use. But that being said, I do get a lot of comments on my videos asking for a terminal setup. So I hope that this video is at least useful to those people that were asking. Again, if you're more interested in my NeoVim setup, that's linked in the description as well as a video going over all the details on that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. If you have any criticisms, also leave them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also consider joining my Discord where there are a ton of awesome people that would be happy to talk to you about game development, just general software development, anything in between. Um, and also consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue making videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. See ya.